basic medical sciences welcome to another enteric video right so in the previous two videos we covered e coli and klebsiella right so check our playlist and watch those two videos first so that you understand uh, these enterics in order in this video we're going to talk about shigella Right, so if this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Uh, and again, if you check in the comment section, there is a link to PayPal. Uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe, if you have at least a dollar, it's, it's fine. Every dollar counts. I always say that. All right, uh, so the objectives of this video, we are going to talk about general information about Shigella. The main conditions associated with Shigella. Uh, we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of this Shiga toxin because I mentioned it in the previous video, right? And we'll conclude by talking about diagnosis and treatment of uh, Shigella infection, right? Okay, so let's get into it. Right, so there are four main species of Shigella. Uh, and here I have uh, Shigella dysenteri, uh, Shigella flexneri, Shigella boidae, and Shigella sonei. Right, uh, there are other, uh, other species, but these are four main important ones, right? Uh, and all of them are non-motile, right? All of them are non-motile. Shigella does not ferment lactose and does not produce hydrogen sulfide. These properties can be used to distinguish Shigella from E. coli, uh, which ferment lactose, and Salmonella, which is a non-lactose fermenter, and produce hydrogen sulfide. Now I think I need to show you the classification again, right? Okay, so this is the classification of gram-negative bacilli, right? So, at first, I said they are classified according to their ability to ferment lactose, right? So, uh, these are lac lactose positive. These are the ones which can ferment lactose, and they can be further divided into fast and slow lactose fermenters. So, fast include... E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, right? And Citrobacter and Seracia, they ferment lactose, but very slowly, right? And as you can see again here, uh, Enterobacter, Citrobacter, Seracia, they are not in bound. So we'll cover them later, but not in this series, right? So we covered E. coli and Klebsiella. Now we are talking about Shigella, right? There it is. So let's start from the beginning, right? So I said lactose fermenters, non-lactose fermenters, right? So the non-lactose fermenters can again be classified according to uh, like whether they have the enzyme oxidase or not, right? So oxidase positive, the main important is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, right? Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the main important one, which is oxidase positive. Then oxidase negative, right? So oxidase negative uh, bacteria can be classified according to their ability to produce hydrogen sulfide on triple sugar ion agar, right? Triple sugar ion agar, right? So Shigella and Yersinia enterocolitic right shigella and yesenia enterocolitica uh these two they do not produce hydrogen sulfide on triple sugar ion agar but salmonella and uh, proteus these can produce hydrogen sulfide on tsi agar right so let's go back uh to shigella Right, so I told you how to differentiate Shigella from E. coli and from Salmonella, right? I said E. coli can ferment lactose, but Shigella doesn't. And again, Salmonella is uh, it's a non-lactose fermenter, 
same as shigella but it does not produce hydrogen sulfide humans are the only hosts for shigella and the dysentery that it causes uh, usually strikes preschool age children and populations in nursing homes transmission is through fecal oral route via chemically contaminated water and hand to hand contact right shaking hands okay so please wash your hands right okay shigella is never considered part of normal intestinal flora it's always pathogenic this is very important in diagnosis you are going to see it but for now let's talk about the main conditions uh, caused by shigella right so shigella is actually similar to enteroinvasive e coli uh, in that they both invade intestinal epithelial cells and release sugar toxin which causes cell destruction white blood cells arrive in the inflammatory reaction uh, the colon when viewed via a uh, colonoscopy is shallow ulcers where cells have sloughed off the illness begins with fever right unlike e tick this is enterotoxigenic and cholera which do not invade epithelial cells and therefore do not induce fever right so e tick and cholera they do not induce fever right but in shigella there is fever right so illness begins with fever abdominal pain diarrhea right uh the diarrhea may contain flecks of bright red uh blood and pus as white blood cells patients uh develop diarrhea because the inflamed colon uh, damaged by the sugar toxin is unable to reabsorb fluids and electrolytes right so um this is what this is uh the kind of descent caused by what shigella right okay uh if sugar toxin enters the bloodstream it damages the vascular endothelium cells resulting in hemolytic uremic syndrome hemolytic uremic syndrome and another disease again which is important is reactive arthritis right so in conclusion three main conditions are uh, caused by shigella right number one this is the descent right uh, number two here we have a uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome uh, when the sugar toxin enters the what the bloodstream and number three we have the uh, reactive arthritis right so uh, let's talk more about this sugar toxin right so uh, this is the same toxin as in uh, ehec enterohemorrhagic e coli and enteroinvasive e coli and its mechanism is the same again what does it do they are two subunits right uh, there is an a subunit and b subunit right there is an a subunit bind to five b subunits right okay so a is one and b subunits they are five right okay the b subunits b for binding they bind to the uh, microvillous membrane on the colon allowing the entry of deadly a subunit a for action right so in simple terms please don't be don't get confused you might not need to know the number of subunits what what but just know firstly the b subunit will bind to the epithelial cell and then the a subunit will enter for action right so what does it do the a subunit inactivates the 60s ribosome inhibiting protein synthesis and killing the intestinal epithelial cell right simple okay so uh let's talk about uh diagnosis and treatment and we both know uh number one is cream staining but in shigella this is very important i told you 
in diagnosis, stool culture is very important because Shigella is never intestinal flora, is never part of intestinal flora, it's always pathogenic. The antibiotics uh, shorten the period in which Shigella is shared in the stools, right? And uh, the main antibiotics which are usually used include uh, fluoroquinolones, ciprofloxacin, third generation cephalosporins like ceftriaxone, trimethoprim, and sulfamethoxazole, right? So, thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe, like it, and leave a comment in the comment section. And again, check our playlist, right? So, we have, uh, we have viruses, uh, like uh, almost all of them, like 95%. So if you click the channel and then check on the playlist, you will find the viruses, all of them. And you will find uh, bacteriology here, right? Uh, there are more than, more than 20 videos so far. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you like this video.